um, even though it's not physically, um, but God has provided this facility for us. And we're, we're truly grateful. Um, before COVID, we didn't have, we didn't have, we've never ever heard of Zoom, but we praise God that, you know, there's some positive things that have come out of COVID. Um, it wasn't all bad, but what we've, what we've learned is that we are the body of Christ and we are ligamented one to each other. And, you know, we're not gonna limit the body by, you know, a location. You know, I was speaking to somebody yesterday and I was saying that, you know, we're not limited by just a Croydon area now. We're, we've opened it up to international, you know, um, USA, Canada, um, Kenya, South Africa, Pakistan. We've opened it up. Praise be to God. God has done something new. Um, something new that never, never happened before. And we are again in the new year and we're looking for new stuff. We're looking for new ideas. We're looking for witty inventions. We're looking for new opportunities, doors to open for, for the new. I'm looking for the new. And um, you know, when you've got an expectation, you're just, you're expecting greatness to happen. But, um, but we know in this world, there's still tests and trials. We're not saying that there won't be tests, there won't be trials, there won't be challenges. This is all part of the course, but we commit our, our day, we commit uh, the first fruit of our day um, to God and command the morning, command the morning, command the blessing for that day. So whatever that day has in store for us, we know it will be ordered. Our footsteps will be ordered by the Lord. So thank you all for joining. Welcome, Lenny, just joining and uh, Cheryl just joining. Jay, wonderful. I know that you, you know, <laughs> we might have to call on you for uh, some music. So get ready, get ready. Uh, Fiona, God bless you. Daniel, good to see you, man. Wonderful. <laughs> Daniel's like my baby, <laughs> baby son. <laughs> He is my son, <laughs> a son from another mother. <laughs> but you know, I've met his mother, so so we can uh, we can share Daniel. Like I've like I've met Jay's mom as well. We I've negotiated with her and said we're gonna share this one. <laughs> uh, go, I go around adopting all these boys. I don't know why it's always boys. I don't know, but I adopt girls as well. <laughs> but yeah, to God be the glory. There's some there's an anointing there. There must be an anointing there. Um, the anointing of, 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 of a mother, you know, that mother anointing, <laughs> you know, you just want to, you just want to love everyone, you just want to take everyone and just cuddle everyone, squeeze everyone, you know how you, how you do to your kids, and they're like, get off, get off, I remember when my children were home, they used to lock themselves up in their room, and I used to like, knock on the door and go in there, and said, what do you want, what do you want, I said, I just want to be with you. I just want to sit with you. And they're like, oh gosh, go away. <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, I have that infectious um, uh, anointing that uh, you, you, you can't really be horrible to me. That's what people say to me. Grace, we can't be horrible to you. You've got this grace about you. We can't really be horrible to you. <laughs> and it's true. People can't really be horrible to me because there's, there's a grace that are on me is a, uh, as in name as in nature glory to god and talking about grace i just want to read a chapter from psalms uh 84 and uh this is what i will god led me to this this morning so let me just read it i'm, I'm going to read it from amplified it says how lovely are your dwelling places Ah, how lovely, how lovely is your dwelling places. And you know what? It really is lovely to, to be together. I really uh, uh, see it as an honor and a privilege for us to be together. How lovely are your dwelling places, O Lord of hosts. My soul, my 
my, my life, my inner self longs, longs for a greater desire. Great for greatly desires the courts of the Lord. In other words, it's saying my soul, everything that is within me, longs for and greatly desires the courts of the Lord. We have to always have that desire, that hunger, that thirst, to always want to be be in his presence always want to be in his presence my heart and my flesh sings for joy to the living God you know our heart should always just be spontaneous just singing God's praises with joyful joyful lips joyful heart our heart and my my heart and my flesh sings for joy to the living God. Verse three, the bird has found a house, the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young. Even your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Verse four, blessed and greatly favored are those who dwell in your house and in your presence. God said we are blessed. <laughs> we are blessed and greatly favored. Those who dwell in his presence. There's something about the presence of God. You do not leave the same. Once you've been in contact with the presence of God, something changes. There's changes in the atmosphere. Things shift. Things, things are, are, are dispelled when you come into the presence of the Lord. They will, they will be singing your praises all the day long. That's what we want to do. We don't just want to sing praises when we're together. We want to sing praises all the day long. Verse 6. Passing through the valley of weeping, they make it a place of springs. The early rain also covers it with blessings. They, they go from strength to strength, increasing in victorious power. Each of them, a, verse eight, O oh Lord of hosts, hear my prayer. That's what we want God to do this morning. We want him to hear our prayer. Listen, O oh God of Jacob. See our shield, O oh God, and look at the face of your anointed. That's what we want to do. We want to look into his face of the anointed one. Verse 10, for a day in his courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. Just one day, just one moment, just five minutes in his presence is better than a thousand elsewhere. There's no place we, we would rather be right now than in his presence. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows grace and favor and honor. No good thing will, will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, how blessed and how greatly favored is the man who trusts in you, believe in you and relying on you and committing himself to you with confident hope and expectation. The Lord said he is a sun and a shield. He said the Lord bestows grace upon us and favor upon us and honor upon us. And he said, no good thing. I love that part. No good thing. There's nothing that he will not do. He said, there's no good thing will I withhold from those who walk uprightly. So we know as long as we're walking uprightly, there's nothing, there's nothing God will said he will withhold from us. As long as we're in right relationship, as long as we're walking uprightly, he said, there's no good thing. Can you think of some good things? 
He said there's no good thing that he will, will withhold. He will withhold from us. I'm just giving God glory for that. You know what? That is a, such a comfort to me. As long as I'm in right relationship with him, as long as I'm in right standing, God said there's nothing. There's nothing that he will withhold from us. He's not holding back. God wants to give us more. He wants to give us more. Uh, but it's about loving his presence. It's about enjoying his presence. It's about delighting ourselves in his presence. You know, just being in his presence. There's no greater place. There's no greater, there's no greater thing on earth than being in the presence of the Lord. Because you know what? When we've met with Jesus, you know, something changes. <laughs> something changes. Situations have to change. You know, anything that's holding you has to just release. You know, any blockages have to be like removed. Any mountains have to be leveled. <laughs> I'm telling you, things change. Things change when we come into the presence of God. So I just want to thank God. Father, we thank you again for your word. We thank you for your presence, Father. We pray that, Lord, you give us such a hunger, such a desire, Lord, to be in your presence, Lord. Father, we know there's no better place. There's no greater place that we'd rather be. But sometimes we miss it, Lord, because we're not, we're not drawing near. But, Father, we, we ang agonize all the time sometimes because we haven't been in your presence. We haven't soaked in your presence. Father, we pray that, Father God, you said just one day in your courts is better than a thousand. Better than a thousand elsewhere, Father. We, we just one day. But Father, we don't just want one day, we want a minutely, hourly, secondly, daily walk with you, daily communion with you, daily fellowship with you, walking and talking and just being in your presence, Father God. We know that, Father God, you said there's no, nothing that you will, no good thing that you would withhold from them that walk uprightly. So Father, we declare that Father, we are the righteousness of Christ and we're in right relationship with you. We're in right standing with you. Father God, we thank you that God, that we don't have to fear and we don't have to hide and we don't have to run for cover because Father, you know that, Father, you know that we can come to you no matter what we've done and ask for forgiveness. So Father, I speak forgiveness over every single life this morning, Father God where we have faltered, where we have fallen down, where we have disappointed you, where we have come short of your glory, Father. We ask your divine forgiveness, Father. We ask you to wash us and cleanse us, Father. You said that, Father, you said a broken and a contract heart. You will not despise. You will not turn us away, Father. So we come boldly to your throne room, God. We ask for mercy. Father, we ask for grace. We ask for grace and mercy to help us in the time of need. Father, we have so many needs. We have so many anxieties. We have so much, some of the things that we're, that we're dealing with at this time. But we ask for your mercy. We ask for your grace. We ask for your favor. You said your favor surrounds us like a shield, Father. So be a shield for us. Let your grace and favor be multiplied to us. Father, I thank you for all what you're doing in our each and every one of our lives. Thank you for bringing us into 2023. Father, thank you that we could live to see another day. Father, we are so grateful that you've brought us into a, 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 new, a new field, a new environment. Father God, somewhere that, Lord God, that you can order our steps and direct us. Father, we know that if we submit ourselves to you, if we humble ourselves, before you truly oh god you will you will direct our path you will raise us up father help us to trust you in everything not just some things but in everything father you said it whatever we do in word or in deed do it all in the name of jesus that what that means anything and everything we do it all in the name of jesus christ the son of the living God. We, we adore you right now, Father. We thank you for what you're going to do this morning, Father God, in every single life. Father, we know that we're not here by accident. Father, you have orchestrated, uh, you have directed us, you've 
Father, some are tired, some are getting ready for school, some are getting ready for work, some are already on the bus, on the train, Father, but God, you are there. Wherever we are, you are already there. So, Father, order our steps, order our day. We command the morning, Father. We declare goodness and mercy will follow every single person today. Father, the goodness and mercy will chase us down. Father God, I thank you that, Lord, for your grace and your favor to be multiplied to us. Father God, I thank you, dear God, for what you're going to do in our lives today, Father, what you've already done, because you've awoken us up, you've given us life, you've given us breath, you've given us the ability to eat and to drink and to dress ourselves and to clothe ourselves. Father, we are so grateful that, Father, you've given us that health and strength, and those that have been infirmed, Father, you have restored and you have healed, you've raised them up. We thank you, oh God, for what you're doing and what you continue to do. Father, we thank you for Pastor Chris as he comes uh, today to minister to us the word of God. And Father, we pray that our hearts will be prepared, open to receive a word. Father, we know that just one word from, from you can change our lives forever. Father, you will put eternity in our hearts, Lord. Father, I pray, dear God, that we continue to be uh, healed, lifted up, raised up strengthened and encouraged and father inspired and even motivated father equipped for every good work father thank you for every life that you called lord i pray that this year lord god we will be so so determined and so so strong to, to never let anything get us down lord but just stand father and having done all to stand keep standing so, Father, we, we thank you for your strength, Lord, because your strength is made perfect. Even when we are weak, Lord, your strength is made perfect. Father God, you perfect us even in our weaknesses, Lord. So we thank you that we, you give us supernatural strength today for each and everything task that we need to accomplish today, Father. You give us that supernatural strength that we need, Father God, and the grace and the favour. And Father, that Lord, we will be your ambassadors, we'll be your called out ones, we'll be your children, your beloved. Father, you call us friends. We are friends because, Father God, we, we're, we're in a relationship with you, Lord. Father, thank you for each and every person, Father. Those that are not on today, Father, I pray you touch them also, Lord God. I pray that you strengthen them wherever they are, Father God, and just encourage their heart, lift them up, Father, out, out of any despair, any, any discouragement, any any challenges, any any strongholds of the enemy, any any uh, things that the enemy will try to use to bombard them. We break the bands of wickedness. We break it off now in the name of Jesus. And Lord, you, you said you come to set the captives free. And so we, we lose um, the, the, every chain. <laughs> we break every chain of the enemy that the captives will go free in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we give you praise, Lord. You are a mighty God. We just want to dwell in your presence. We want to live in your presence. We want to swim in your presence. Father, we give you glory and praise this morning as we continue to give you all the praise and the honor. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen. Glory be to God. You know, I thank God for, I thank God for his Holy Spirit. Uh, I really am grateful to God. <laughs> oh my gosh, I've been, I just wanna share a quick testimony. Um, I've been without a washing machine now for about two weeks. And those of you who know, have, you know, have washing machines, you know that washing machine is a vital necessity <laughs> because your washing can get piled up. And uh, before Christmas, we rang the, the, the washing machine um, um, people and we, uh, we booked a, re a repair. An engineer to come out and they said oh we'll be out in three days somebody will contact you in three days now three days had gone no no nobody nobody came and then 
we were into Christmas and obviously everybody's on holiday and uh, now, now this is going, going into a week and a half without a washing machine. Anyway, yesterday we had a, we had a text message, oh, that engineer is coming. So I thought, oh, brilliant, excellent. So the engineer came and I said to the engineer, um, I think the drum's gone because it was making a loud noise and then it just gave up the ghost and it just died. So, so <laughs> he, 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 um, he, he was a, um, I, I, I spoke to him and I said, um, you know, how quickly can this be repaired? And he said, oh, you know, we, we checked his, his little um, computer and there was no parts available, no parts. He said, oh, there's no parts available. You know, we'd have to, you know, send from them from abroad. We'd have to contact Italy and get it shipped over. So no way am I waiting for it to come from Italy. <laughs> there's no way that's going to be possible. I'm not waiting for shipment from Italy to get my washing machine. I need it like ASAP. Um, so anyway, he's, he just wrote off my machine. <laughs> Because this is all on the insurance. And he said, oh, I'm putting you down for a brand new model. <laughs> I was so excited. <laughs> I was so excited. He said, yeah, I'm putting you down for a brand new model. Because the insurance, like, if we can't, we, we haven't got the parts. <laughs> and we can't get the parts. And then we'll have to request for you to have a brand new model. So I've got a brand new machine coming. <laughs> but it's not, that's not, that's not, that's not everything. I've got a, a cupboard that was that was uh, dismantled and was broken. And I said to him, uh, I, I, do you know how I can get this fixed? He said, oh, have you got the screws? Have you got the screwdriver and whatever? He went and fixed my covers. <laughs> he went and fixed my covers. So I was just like saying to him, you have no idea that this is a God set up because if any other engineer came, he probably wouldn't have given me a brand new model and he definitely wouldn't have fixed my, all my units as well. He fixed my units free of charge. So <laughs> I was just saying, what is your name? I said, God bless you. God bless you, I was saying to him. You have no idea that you are a blessing from the God, from the Lord. <laughs> saying to the man I said you are a blessing from the Lord God has ordered your steps to my house because I didn't know how I was going to get my units fixed didn't only uh about so what I'm trying to say is God showed me something very important delay is not denial <laughs> because I they took long to get me an engineer God was choosing the right engineer for me so what I'm trying to say sometimes we're thinking we're thinking two weeks this is this is not on but it was on because God had it as a setup because <laughs> he picked the right engineer for me and ordered that right engineer to my house so I was just like giving him blessings I was saying God bless you I said God prosper for you <laughs> I was just blessing this man <laughs> Because I'm telling you, he I was I he he left happy, he left like skipping because he never expected that he would come into a home and get so much blessing. But the blessing was because I was the joy of the Lord was on me. I was just blessing this bro this brother, this engineer. He's he left smiling. <laughs> so I know a seed had been sown there in his heart because the blessings of God will follow him. And that's what we need to do. We need to bless and empower every single person we come into contact with and change their day because his day was changed. And uh, I thank God. I just wanted to share that with you because I was like giving God praise because God was showing me, don't worry about the delay. Delay is not denial. Just remember, if something's taking a bit long, don't hurry God. <laughs> just wait on his timing. God knows the right timing for that. I just wanted to share that with you. But right now, I don't know if Jay's got a, a, a song that he can play. I don't know if he's, if he's uh, in his van or I'm not sure if he's available. 
But if not, um, if not, um, I will just invite Pastor Chris to come because uh, he's, 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 he's ready. He's ready. <laughs> Oh, sorry. <laughs> God is good. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, so remember that. It's got taken a bit long. Don't hurry, God. God knows exactly what he's up to. Okay. Amen. Oh, praise be to God. I absolutely love that song. That was one of my favorite songs. And uh I I love um Great is your mercies towards me, God. Your loving kindness. Great is your grace and favor. You know, God, he favors us. He is, gives us mercies upon mercies upon mercies. Goodness upon goodness upon goodness. Kindness upon kindness. Upon. Great is your grace. Great is your grace. We thank God for um, that ministry of that song, we are grateful to God um, for his grace and his favor that has been multiplied to us. And uh, we just, we're just thankful. We're just grateful. Right now, I'm just gonna um, introduce uh, Pastor Chris to come and to minister to us the word um, of encouragement, a word of devotion, a word of upliftment, a word of life, a word that will set us free, a word that will deliver us from every bondage, every hindrance, every yoke. Yokes are destroyed and burdens are going to be removed this morning. I speak it forth in the name of Jesus because we have to declare it, we have to decree it, and we have to desire what God has to say to us that we're going to receive it receive it in Jesus mighty name so welcome Pastor Chris nice to have you <laughs> it's like a visitor <laughs> it's like a visitor nice to have you it's a uh, honor to have you today <laughs> where have you been <laughs> we welcome him right now God bless you <laughs> um, bless you each and every one of you um, thank God for this another day truly another day that he has made that we should be glad truly glad and rejoice within and uh, i thank god for what has been shared already thank uh, god for donna who uh, laid the platform laid the foundation uh, earlier and ushered us into ushering us into the presence of god and just uh, being able to minister you know directly to personal needs of uh, other people and so we're thankful for uh, sensitivity and uh, a submission to the will of the Father um, in uh, being led by the Spirit of God to reach out to um, other people. And uh, so thank God for um, every one of you this morning and uh, thank God for grace. Um, I was going to say being a perfect host, but I should say that <laughs> being a perfect host. <laughs> I do not hesitate in that respect. And, uh, you know, it's bless her um, for just um, encouraging you in the word and just uh, through a testimony and uh, truly a testimony, um, be a testimony of what I'm going to uh, minister this morning. And, uh, so I just thank God. Uh, so I'm just, uh, I welcome uh, those who are just coming on, Voke, Vivian and Roni. Um, Lenny B, welcome. Cheryl, welcome. Junior, welcome. Mom, welcome. Donna, Fiona, Marcia, welcome. Uh, Daniel, welcome. Bless you. And I just really pray that you be challenged this morning through the word. Um, I, I was told, uh, not at zero notice, but uh, that I uh, would be mi um, ministering this morning. Uh, and uh, you know, when you're told by your dear wife, you, <laughs> you can hardly refuse. <laughs> so I'm here this morning and uh, I'm, I'm uh, so um, 
God gave me what I'm going to share um, this morning as I woke up. So, um, but it, in, invariably, it's an extension of what I ministered on, on, on Sunday. And uh, uh, if you um, weren't there on Sunday, I would encourage you to um, get the recording. And, and it was a um, the title on Sunday was uh, Divine Preparation for the Year Ahead. So it's divine preparation for the year ahead. And, uh, you know, uh, I spoke on um, so many times we have a, almost have a year planned, or we have asp aspirations and expectation for the, what the year will bring in regards to, mainly in regards to our own personal needs. And, uh, and so it, it, it's not about, what we want but what has God assigned for our lives that we as according to his will it will manifest and so this is really just an extension of that and uh, so um, the heading today will be dare to be different in Christ will you dare to be different in Christ and so it's not following the the wind of uh, doctrine of what other people are saying. It's not about being a copycat. It's about what is God saying to you as an individual in this season? What has he called you to do? What is he assigned you to do? And what will you do that is not, that's going to place God first in your life rather than place him second by virtue you want God to affirm your plans for your own life rather than um, fall into the slipstream of the Holy Spirit to be guided by the Holy Spirit to do the will of the Father it's so important so important and um, and so I'm I'm so thankful um, for the preparation that has already been laid on the platform this morning and uh, so I will continue in that vein I'm just going to pray Heavenly Father, I just thank you right now that I, as I come, that I speak not of myself, but I speak concerning your will and what you want to decree and declare and what you want to speak into the hearts and the minds of those that are listening. And I rather say listening, Father God, but it's a listening that is so important, not just the hearing, but the listening, because a listen listening will empower us to do something in respect of what we've heard and so that the listening will make a difference not only to us but bring glory to your name and so father i thank you that as i speak i will speak as an oracle of you and as i minister i will minister as the ability that you have given me that father god that you through jesus christ through me might be glorified and so father i commit every word that will go forth it will not fall to the ground but it will be a seed that will so be sown in the hearts of your sons and your daughters that will continue to germinate father god and, and continue to exponentially grow in their lives that will truly make a difference to your kingdom so i thank you father god that Everyone, every word will be sealed with your favor and with your power to bring increase to every hearing life in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you for that anointing that will remove every burden and destroy every yoke and every mindset of the enemy in Jesus' name. Amen. amen amen and amen and praise be to god now um i said that about uh, divine preparation for the year ahead and uh, so this is wasn't the normal thing one might hear which was um in terms of uh, new year's resolutions and things we always do <laughs> as a result of what we did during the festive period overheat what we'll overeat and things like that. We're going to do um, exercise, join a gym, all that type of thing. We're, uh, we're going to go on holiday. We're going to buy a new car. We're going to buy. All those are beautiful and uh, beautiful. But uh, the reality 
is it pales into insignificance in regards to doing the kingdom work. In other words, fulfilling God's will and purpose for your life and walking in obedience to God's will. And, uh, and so when, when we recognize that um, all God wants us to do is to um, really just um, drive into his presence, to seek him, to pursue him, pursue his will, and just to accept him at his word, just to accept him at his word. That's all God wants us to do is accept him at his word. And his word is very clear in the scriptures that uh, as we are, uh, as you abide in him and the word abides in you, you ask whatever you will and it shall be done unto you. Will according to his will and his purpose. And um, so I'm just going to read um, a few scriptures and uh, in everything I'm going to share today, it speaks about being different and it speaks about embracing the simplicity of the gospel. What is good news? How do we share the gospel? How do we share the gospel? And, uh, and so um, I'm just going to read from Matthew 9 and uh, verse 18. And uh, I'm going to read in, in sort of in context. And I, I may read on because there's so many things that so, are so characteristic of just doing things in the flow of the Holy Spirit, working in partnership with God's assignment and God's will for one's life. And, and Jesus, he was obedient unto the Father. He said, the, the word, it is meet for me to do the will of my Father. It is, it's expedient. It's, it's natural for me to do the will of the Father. And so it should be natural for each and every one of us to do the will of the Father. And when we do the will of the Father, let me here say, it's not going to be um, openly embraced by everybody because you will be different. You will be looked upon as being a little weird, a little strange, a little, um, in, uh, you, you'll look, be looked upon as being indifferent in certain cases. But the fact of the matter is the more, the less of you, the more of Christ. The more you, God, it will exalt you. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, and He will exalt you in due season. And when you, when I say humble, just it's the simplicity of knowing that you, you are submitted to the perfect will of God. That whatever God asks you to do, just do it. Just do it. And uh, so we should be, as, as we enter into this new year, we should just avail ourselves really to just be used of God, whatever way God wants us to use us, let him use you in that way. Let him use you. Let us be used in the way that God wants us to be used. And so verse 18, uh, uh, Matthew 9 and verse 18, it says, while he was saying these things, and this is Jesus, to them, a ruler, a synagogue official entered the house and kneeled down and worshipped him, saying, my daughter has just died, but come and lay your hand on her and she will live. Jesus got up and began to accompany the ruler with his disciples. Then a woman who had suffered from a hemorrhage for 12 years came up behind him and touched the tassel fringe of his outer robe, for she had been saying to herself, if I only touch his outer robe, I will be healed. But Jesus turning and seeing her said, take courage, daughter. Your personal trust and confident faith in me has made you well. And at once the woman was completely healed. <laughs> Let me just part there for a second. Here it is, um, someone besieges a ruler, besieges uh, 
uh, Jesus to come to his house to or come to his place or in his vicinity where his daughter had died. And, uh, but here it is. And, and I'm, <laughs> see, in the context of all these scriptures, you'll find that everybody's doing things a little different here because what has happened here is that the ruler is saying, my daughter's die, but died, but if you come lay your hands on my daughter, she will live. Now that's different. Will you dare to be different? When you see, when you're in a seemingly, when your backs are against the wall, when seemingly you don't know how to get out of a situation, will you dare to be different to say, you know what? It might be that no one has ever done it this way, but I'm gonna do it this way, you see? And I, I love what um, Grace uh, shared regarding the washing machine because she took it once. Now God had orchestrated that the man, I mean, it's not, as Grace said, it's not easy to not be able to wash. Uh, not my clothes. Let me emphasize clothes. <laughs> wash, your, wash your clothes. <laughs> wash your clothes. The washing machine is broken down, and you're not being able to wash your clothes because it all piles up. It's spilling out the cupboards. You've got it all over the place. And uh, what had happened is that beforehand, uh, before um, the new year, they had actually promised that the 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 um, people, the engineers, would come out within three days. And so three days had elapsed and never heard anything from the engineers, nothing. By then we was into Christmas, you see, and in the holiday period. So, it, so there was a delay, but th within the delay, there was still expectation that, you know what, this machine, and we spoke about it, Grace and I spoke, we, we've had this machine for about 11 years, this washing machine. Now it's faithful, but everything, must come to an end at some point, you see? And so the, the machine just um, completely collapsed on us. I mean, it gave up the ghost. But the reality is this, we had reached out to um, engineers to come. They didn't come at the right time. There was a delay. And in the Jesus situation, it, as this ruler was talking to Jesus, he was expecting Jesus to follow him immediately because he had faith. I, not that I had faith in the engineers to come out and make every, every wrong right, but I had faith in God that for God at this time, you can't, uh, we can't afford to go out there and buy a new washing machine. You see, so something has to happen. Anyway, the, as you uh, grace shared, the washing machine man came, um, he looked at the machine and because Grace dared to be different to say, um, he said that these, these parts were um, very hard to get hold of. Grace was bold enough to say, well, it's not that I want it fixed because it's an old machine, but I want a new machine. And so the man concurred, in other words, he agreed with her because she was bold enough and forward enough to say, I want a new machine. <laughs> she did to be different, you see. Uh, the man just succumbed to a charm, <laughs> a subtle charm, and uh, said, yeah, okay, I will order a new machine. But not only that, and see, this is how God works. He, that he goes the extra mile for anyone that will be bold in him. And so uh, what had happened is that the, the man, uh, Grace, then stepped out in boldness again and presumption, <laughs> you could almost call it presumption. And I'm talking about, will you dare to be different in 2023? Are you going to do the same old, same old, same old and expect results? Are you going to expect God to come through for you if you don't reach out in faith? And so Grace then said, uh, and of a truth, we had uh, a, a, a cupboard door, which is part of a unit, a fitted unit that had come off. And uh, it, wasn't, 
it, it was by misadventure. I'm just going to say that because somebody broke it. Someone broke it. Let me just put it plain. Someone broke it, and it's like what? And so the person didn't know how we're going to get it fixed. And the person said that they will get it fixed, and it for three weeks the doors hang not there, exposing all our weirs and our pots and everything that didn't look good. And uh, didn't and he didn't know how he was going to fix it. But this man who came to the house for the washing machine for the washing machine <laughs> not to fix units <laughs> not to fix units because of the bolt because grace dared to be different, knowing that what the favor of God was upon you. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I just stepped out and said, "Can you fix units? Can you fix units? <laughs> Will you dare to be different?" And the man said, "As it goes." I used, I used to be a kitchen fitter. I used to be a kitchen fitter. <laughs> now, God, how could God orchestrate a man to fix a washing machine who was a previous, to, to come, who was previously a kitchen fitter? A kitchen fitter. So he he just had all the tools available, took out his tools immediately, and just f fixed, which seemed looked like it was a forlorn situation. Impossible. Imp I wouldn't say impossible, but it, it was wearing on our patients, you see, because you're, every time you're coming into the kitchen and you've seen your, your pots exposed and everything, else, and it's just a memory that if the person didn't fast with the, uh, the, the kitchen unit in the first place, it wouldn't have happened. But God favoured, and I'm, I'm still talking about daring to be different. And so... So there it was, God exceeded our expectation. And it's such a joy. God exceeded. And besides that, there's other things that happen within that kitchen. And that the that same person said, I will fix it. And we've had this situation prevailing for over two years. And it, this same person said, I will fix it. When that new washing machine comes, I will fix the extra bits as well. And in fact, I'm going to order the parts for it. I'm thinking, what, what? And Grace is telling me, I'm thinking, what, what? I'm thinking, God, you're a right on time God. And I'm saying to you, once you trust God, it's about expectation. If Grace never had expectation that something would be done, she wouldn't have asked the question. And sometimes we have to dare to be different. We have to be bold. We have to have our confidence in God to know that it's not the man, but it's the God. It's the God that favors us. It's not the man. The man could only just yield to the spirit of grace <laughs> and let me say spirit of grace and according to the grace of our lord jesus christ and grace herself with a smile and her charm and everything else but he yielded to that but and so um here it is this ruler says if you can only lay your hands on her she will live she will live but yet here it is in the context of everything. Jesus got up and began to accompany the ruler with his disciple. Then, interrupted. then a, he was interrupted. And so can you imagine there was, a delay. there was a delay, but can you imagine perhaps there might have been a little anxiety from the ruler who said, come on, don't delay. Something happened. Then a woman who had suffered from a, hemorrhage for 12 years came up behind him and touched the tassel fringe of his outer robe for she had been saying to herself if only i touch his outer robe i will be healed again this person dared to be different she had been hemorrhaging for 12 years and she did to do something that was unlawful. She was hemorrhaging blood. She was unclean. She was not embraced by society. It was evident, it may have been evident that she was unclean, 
the clothing that she wore, she was different, but she said, if only, and I'm, what I'm saying to you this year, you have to be blinkered, so blinkered that you say, if only I serve God with all my heart, if only I seek him first in the, in the morning hours, in the, in the midnight hours, in the night hours, if only I know I'll be made whole. In no, I know that I will be complete in him. I know that all the things that I desire will be added unto me. This woman did something different. She pressed through that crowd. She would have crawled on her hands and knees. She did something. She wasn't dignified. She wasn't upright. She wasn't upright. She, was, she would have crawled on her hands and knees and she would have pressed through that crowd. And you know something? It may well be that was the only way she could have got to Jesus. <laughs> Sometimes you've got to do things a little different because if she would have stood upright and obviously exposed, ex, um, exposed a hemorrhage in self, then she would have just been automatically pushed out of the way but she pressed through the crowd and sometimes we have to press into the will of God we have to press into the purposes of God we have to press into the desires of God in order to see the supernatural manifest in our lives to see a miracle in our life to see God def define favor upon our lives we so we're so quick to do sometimes many times what everybody else is doing let's just take this route i know that it has happened before if i go down this route i will i will i will get it done we need to know that we need to listen to the holy spirit we need to listen to the because it's god invariably that works in us both to will and to do of his good pleasure because what god wants to favor us God wants to favor us. And so verse 21 says, for she had been saying to herself, if I only touch his outer robe, I will be healed. Now I'm just saying to you, how many of you will dare to be different? Dare to take hold of the word of God and confess the scriptures over your life. Make confession. She repeat, if only... I touch his outer robe, I will be, she met, it was a meditation. She met, she muttered it, she decreed it, she declared it. So many times we, we don't come into the will of God because we don't declare things in our lives. We don't declare the will of God, the purpose of God upon our life, upon our children's life, upon situations, upon circumstances, upon our physical body, upon our minds. We don't decree and declare it over our mind. Whatsoever man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So there is something that when you, your heart connects to your mouth, something will happen accordingly. And so you have to dare to be different. You have to decree a few things. Whatever is bound on earth, whatever you bind on, bind on earth is already bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth is already loosed in heaven. In other words, God has already affirmed it. He's just waiting for you to utter it and decree and declare it into the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Drive yeah. out those situations. Drive out those circumstances circumstances in your life drive out ill health drive out disease drive out lack drive out poverty drive it out drive it out of your family decree and declare salvation deliverance healing in in a given situation this is what happened here with the daughter this daughter who was ill but Jesus turning and seeing her said, take courage, daughter. Your personal trust and confident faith in me has made you well. And at once the woman was completely, <laughs> you see, according to your faith be unto you. What is, how, does, how do you demonstrate your faith? 
by sitting down and waiting and said, well, no one's knocked on my door. No one's rang me. No one's said anything to me. No one's given me anything. That's negative confession. <laughs> you need to decree and declare the word of God, the word of truth. You shall know the truth and it shall make you free. You can't be dealing with man's well or the world's way of thinking that if I'm going to go down, if I go down the route everywhere everybody else is going, then surely I will get a result. Have you listened to the Holy Spirit? You're in partnership with the Holy Spirit. Have you listened to your partner? Are you just so belligerent? In, a, in other words, you're so blinkered that you just think, no, I ain't listening to anybody. I'm just listening to my emotions and my feelings. This is how I feel, Lord. I'm patient and I want it now. Yeah, you can have it now, but, I, <laughs> but how are you seeking the Father? Are you seeking Jesus? Are you seeking him? And uh, so it's, let me read that verse again. But Jesus turning and seeing her, take courage, daughter, your personal trust and confident faith in me has made you well. And at once the woman was completely healed, completely healed because she listened. I'm going to say this only. She listened to the voice of the Holy Spirit. She listened to that inner voice that said, this, I, I've tried everything. I've done it. I've seen it. I've worn the t-shirt, but one thing paid all her money, paid all her money in, a, in, in another scripture. It says she, sp she spent, spent all, mm -hmm. but you know something? The one person I haven't tried is Jesus. Amen. <laughs> so let me just try Jesus now. I don't care what anybody thinks about me. I don't think, care what anybody says about me. I don't care if they want to stop me or they're going to drag me out in in shame, I don't care. Because you know what? If I only but just can touch the hem of, the gar hem of Jesus' garment, his robe, I will be made whole. And she built up her confidence through reciting it. Re she recited it, she muttered it. She decreed, she declared it. And by virtue of doing that, a faith was built up in doing something that, let me say something that was unnatural from a human perspective. It was unnatural for her to do it. It was not dignified for her to do that. It was not cor politically correct for her to do that. But sometimes we always want to be politically correct in everything we do. The reason we don't receive things is because we listen to the world. And when we listen to the world, we say, no, I can't say that. I can't do that. I can't believe that. Why? Because you're fearing what the world might say and how you be perceived by the world or your security might be rocked. Your foundation of your trust might be rocked. You got to step out. You got to step, you got to dare to be different. And it's like when the storm blows up in your life, you got to be, what are you doing that's different? When a storm, when Jesus sent the disciples, he said, go and meet me on the other side. And the disciples were in the boat. And a storm blew up. A, a raging storm. And this is on the Sea of Galilee. I always say this because when you go to the Sea of Galilee, it's not a sea, it's a lake. And when we went to the Sea of Galilee in Israel, I thought to myself, how did the, a storm blow up in a, a lake like this? So peaceful, so tranquil. Couldn't you you're trying to um, envision it, get a vision of what it would have been like. But yet a storm blew, a fierce storm. And we know that it was demonic. It was meant to destroy the disciples. Anything the devil does 
thief comes not but to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly, life in full. So Jesus, at the moment they were crying out in despair, he walked on water towards them, defied. Will you, Jesus dared to be different. Now you could have said, now if even they, I, I'm not going to say anything, but can you imagine Jesus swimming to the boat? Somehow it just seems fitting and right that the Lord Jesus Christ, the Savior, our Savior, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords should defy nature and walk and water. And sometimes when we dare to be different, like Jesus did, walk on water, even we can walk on water. And you say, come on, Chris, don't, don't say that, please. <laughs> he was Jesus. That was Jesus. Well, Peter did it. <laughs> Let me get there. Peter. And Peter was a man. Was a man <laughs> like you and I. And he said, looked out and said, Jesus, if it be you, bid me to come. Now, let me say this in the midst of a storm, a fierce storm, he stepped out of the boat. And he defied nature. Will you dare to be different? You might say, come on, Chris. That was Peter. Well, Peter was a man of like passion, just like us. He had his weakness. The same Peter that would deny Christ three times. The same Peter that would take a sword and cut off the um, man's ears. Man <laughs> is, the, the, the man that was... You know, he had a lot of, um, <laughs> a lot of passion. <laughs> he had so much passion that it was irrational many times. It was the same Peter, yet the same Peter stepped out of the boat and walked on water. Will you dare to be different? Now, I'm not telling you to go out to the River Thames and walk on water for walk on water for the sake of doing it. But I'm saying, in an impossible situation. Are you going to listen to Jesus when he says, come, are you going to listen to him? And are you going to be faithful to do what he calls you to do or prompts you to do or constrains you to do? That's the important thing. Are you going to dare to be different? And so Peter walked out, stepped out of the boat. And he walked towards Jesus, defying nature, the, the nature of gravity that just would pull you down in the water. He did something that was supernatural because he dared to be different from the rest of the disciples who were in the boat cowering with one another, thinking, my God, what's happening here? At least Peter stepped out of the boat. And when he stepped out of the boat, a miracle was manifested in his sight. He walked on water until he took his eyes off Jesus. And I'm saying to you today, whatever you do, and if you set your face like a flint and say, I'm going to do it for my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm going to do it from Jehovah God. God will back you up 100%. God will back you. God will back you. And um, we know what happened is that G um, Peter took his eyes off Jesus. And the moment he realized and he saw the nature that was blowing up around him, the storm, the moment he felt it, the moment his five senses come, came into, into action, he began to drown. He, he began to sink. But God, by his nature, he will still look at our faith and said, I'm still here. Jesus was still there. As long as his Jesus was still, is still there, he will rescue you out of any situation. But he will compliment you. He will praise you. He will acknowledge you just for the fact that you would have stepped out in that boat. And I believe as he, as he stepped into the boat and uh, he stilled the storm and the, the storm blew out, as they say, it became still. 
O ye of little faith. It's out. See, we can have faith, but then doubt will come. Peter had faith. Faith allowed him to step out and do the impossible. But doubt came when he took his eyes off Jesus. And so I'm saying to you, saying, will you dare to be different? And keep your eyes focused on Jesus in 2023. Just make him the, the, him the vital necessity in your life. The numero uno, number one in your life. Knowing that if you continue to be obedient to his will, the impossible will be made possible. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. And I'm going to say, um, I, I'm going to continue because this is doing things a little different in the scripture. When Jesus came to the ruler's house and saw, saw now, <laughs> here it is. After a little delay, he comes to the ruler's house and he saw the flute players who were professional hired mourners and the grieving crowd making an uproar. They were making an uproar. <laughs> Sometimes, <laughs> you know, the world makes an uproar. They can speak about so many things. And if you get, um, if you become so deceived by the world, you can, you can just go with the flow of the world because you come, uh, you know, bills are coming up, they're, they're doubled, they're tripled, and, and all these types of it. Uh, you, you know, there's a virus out there. You know this, you know that. Do you know that? There's strikes and there's so many different, we can get disturbed because we think, well, that's not normal. That's the time we're living in. But yet we can dare to be different. <laughs> and so Jesus comes in the midst of this turmoil, all this uproar and all this crying and bawling. He's thinking, what is this about? Yeah, yeah. Uh, he, he's thinking, huh, this is ridiculous. Hired when Jesus came into the ruler's house, he saw the flute players who were professional hired mourners and the grieving crowd making an uproar. He said, he said, don't mind, keep on. I'll just do what I have to do. No, he said, go away. <laughs> Jesus, you might say, well, that, Jesus, that's a bit abrupt. That's rude. No, he said, because it wasn't of faith. <laughs> Sometimes we have to look at our situation and say, and say to the devil, go away. Go away. I drive you out of my life. I drive you out of my affairs. I drive you out of my situation. I drive you out of my body. I drive you out of my mind. Go away, devil, <laughs> in the name of Jesus. Because you know what? I have the mind of Christ. I'm daring to do something different today. And it's not, I'm not in agreement with what you're saying. I'm not in agreement with what is written. I'm not in agreement with the doctor's report. I'm not in agreement. So go away in the name of Jesus. Will you dare to be different? I'm not in agreement with death. Jesus said, I'm not in agreement with what seems as, what seems as though it is death. He said, go away, for the girl is not dead, but is sleeping. And they laughed and jeered at him. They laughed and they, they laughed and jeered at Jesus. <laughs> mocked him. <laughs> they mocked him. And you don't want anybody questioning you. You get upset when someone just questions you, questions your integrity. You get so upset. You don't want anybody saying any word against, many will say words against you because when you're walking on faith, the devil is there to say, I'm just going to make a mess of you. When they're saying all manner of things about you, you're going to be exposed for who you are. And all you do is stand squarely in the face of the devil and just laugh. I, I do that many times. People, <laughs> like I can share testimonies now. <laughs> no, I can't go there. I, <laughs> But look, just, he, just one. <laughs> just one. I, I, look, I, 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 some of you may have heard, but I remember 
when we had antagonism in the house, when there was a spirit in the house, there was spirit by virtue of someone being a tenant in the house. I remember that person was intimidated. My dear wife, Grace, who's smiling here, she would, you know what? It came to a point where I just thought, Grace, you can't be tiptoeing up the stairs, the stairs that you've been walking. Didn't like no noise. Had to didn't, tip, had to tiptoe. Didn't like any noise. She had to tiptoe up the stairs. <laughs> Me here, you're t walking up the stairs. I'm thinking, what are you supposed to do? Fly up the stairs? You're walking, Grace. I mean, why are you tiptoeing up the stairs? These are yours. You've been here for 13 years, and now you're tiptoeing because a man is intimidating. I, every time I turn my back he was in Grace's neck <laughs> I'm thinking this is ridiculous this can't happen in my house I'm the priest of this home this man is not the priest of this home it cannot happen here the man would he didn't come to me you know he would always go to Grace <laughs> You would always go to Grace and then tell Grace, you are, you are the landlord, you should provide this, you should provide that, you should... I'm thinking to myself, <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm thinking, <laughs> to the point I said, enough <laughs> is enough. <laughs> you know, enough. I had to put the spirit, I'm talking, uh, uh, there's a spirit behind the person. Mm. I had to put this, dispel the spirit. We had to dispel the spirit, and I had to give the person notice <laughs> to go. No, no, what I did, this is very funny, but it's a true story. <laughs> there's, there's lots of bits to it. Um, I just, I got some uh, anointing oil. <laughs> oh, this is a true story. I got some anointing oil, and I prayed over it, and I anointed the, the doorposts uh, um, of his room. <laughs> And I, I just said, any demonic spirit, you have to come out. And and uh, God, God, when we looked, he was gone. <laughs> you know what was interesting? We know what was interesting, and I'm saying this to you, is that this person, he came to a point where I, he said something to Grace and he abused her. And I just went. And I knocked on his door and uh, as customer, he would invite me in and I invited in and I said, what is this I hear? And I addressed the situation. When I addressed the situation, the spirit that was behind him abused me. Now, when I say abuse, now this is a Jamaican man. <laughs> bad word, bad word. <laughs> this is bad word. I, it was a tirade of bad words that I'm not familiar with. Jamaican bad words. <laughs> and it, he went from Z to A and A to Z. And he used all types of materials and all types of things to say what he had to say. And I thought to myself, and it was like whoosh in my face. <laughs> I thought, I stood up there and I thought, now you're out of order. You're really out. And I knew then <laughs> his time was limited. But the thing is, what had happened, and I never, I never tackled him I, because when he was going like that, all the people in the house, they all came and they were, they were there looking on. I was just like, I... Chris, now, what are you, landlord, what are you going to do now? <laughs> I maintained my peace in the Lord and we did what we had to do, which was to pray him out. I remember that the day we gave him notice, but he, he just said, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. He, he said he was going to do a whole lot of things to the, to the point it, it was of none effect. I remember he going uh, going up the stairs and he came to his room and he saw the oil <laughs> that was dripping from the from the door that grace had anointed i'm thinking and I, to myself and I, I anointed the doorpost that's what the scripture says <laughs> it's not what the scripture said anoint well, well grace took it to another level <laughs> but the 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 doors were dripping and uh, with and uh, with oil 
and the man saw it. I'm just visualizing the oil running down from the floor. Sorry. The man, <laughs> bless you, Russia. The man saw it, and the terror, <laughs> because he's brought up in old school church back in Jamaica. And the terror that came over him because he knew what the oil meant. <laughs> anointing. The anointing. The power of God. The terror. Let me say something to you. We gave him notice, right. <laughs> but when um. we looked. <laughs> The man had vacated the house <laughs> two weeks before the notice was up. I'm thinking, I can't hear him. I can't see. The, we looked in the drawers. All his things were gone. We look, I looked through the keyhole. I couldn't hear any noise. Look, listen on the door. Nothing. Open the door. It's gone. <laughs> when you dare to be a little different, <laughs> The devil will take note. He'll run in terror. He will run in terror. <laughs> his tail in between his legs, and he will run in terror. You need to take authority over your situation. Jesus took authority. And if, in verse uh, Matthew chapter 9 and verse 27, but when the crowd had been sent out, Jesus went in, took her by the hand, and the girl got up. The girl got up defy the laws of death the girl got up and the news about this spread abroad and all about all the district as jesus went from there two blind men followed him screaming loudly have mercy and compassion on us son of david what did they do they followed him have mercy and compassion on us when he went into the house, the blind men came up to him and Jesus said to them, do you believe with a deep abiding trust that I am able to do this? And they said to him, yes, Lord. Then he touched their eyes saying, according to your faith, not my faith, according to your faith, your trust and confidence in my power and my ability to heal, it will be done to you. And their eyes were open and Jesus sternly warned them, see that no one knows. And I can go on, but what I'm going to say to you is this, and you know what, I haven't even touched my text, but the one thing is this, Paul said, Paul said, I come not in the entire, with the enticing words of man's wisdom but i come in the, the demonstration of the power of god it is important to understand that whatever we do as unto god we don't do it in our ability we present our availability availability we may present our gifts but it's got to be done in the power of the holy spirit it's not you might have a way of um eulogizing or speaking or a dialect or whatever god's not really concerned about your dialect he's concerned about your faith he's not concerned about your men i follow in what is concerned about your faith and your trust and your confidence in it will you dare to be different in 2023 and walk in faith because we walk by faith and not by sight in other words, it's not about relying on your five senses. It's about relying on the Holy Spirit. It's about partnering with the Holy Spirit. It's about knowing that you are on an assignment for the kingdom, the kingdom of God. When you're on an assignment for the kingdom of God, you know that God is with you. God is for you and he's going to do it for you. Whatever he needs to do, he will do it in and through you. I'm just going to give this short illustration. You know what? There's things that happen in my life, and I, I, I really marvel, and I really give God all the glory. I remember, I remember um, the first time I went to, um, the first time I went to Kenya, and uh, I, look, I went there by a miracle. 
let me just say this, and I'm not going to go into details, but I remember this. Because of my obedience to serve, God opened the doors. I, I was not thinking about myself first. I was thinking about the needs of the ministry. That was, they were, it was a mission to Kenya. And uh, so God supernaturally made a way for me to go where I had no money whatsoever. And I've shared that testimony before where God supernaturally provided for me, for, provided for the home and provided for the trip. And I had no idea. I was called to a meeting and I had no idea that I would ever, ever end up in Kenya. But supernatural, God made supernatural provision for me. But the one thing I remember is this. <laughs> when I arrived, in, and I, I can say many things, but because of time, I'm just gonna shorten this testimony. But I'm going to sh show you one thing that God did that was supernatural. And you might think, was that supernatural? It was supernatural. I, I went on this mission field. I was on a plane. Yes, I was on a plane to Kenya. I had no idea what I was getting myself into. And I remember that one thing that impressed, was impressed upon me was that there was a group of people and I asked them, and there were white people on the plane. On the plane, and I asked them, "What are you doing? Where are you going as a group?" And they said they're going to uh, Tanzania. I said, "Oh, what? What is a group like you? Why are you going to Tanzania?" And they said, "Because we're doing an outreach to the Maasai people." Now, for for me, it was it was a dream even to see one massa and out of my spirit i just said i would love to see the minister to the maasai people now the reality is this I, we, I, we were not going to minister to the maasai people we were going to minister in churches which i didn't have any clue about i remember as i arrived in kenya i went to a pastor's house and there were many pastors there i hadn't got a clue and i'm innocent I'm innocent. Pri um, when I say innocent, I'm green on the mission field. I have no experience at all about the mission. Never been before. Never been before. And so I'm then delegated a responsibility <laughs> to. So the group was about twelve people, and I'm delegated two other pe two other people are delegated to me um, as a team. And I'm the leader. And I'm thinking, oh. And so we're all separated and we've gone to different parts of Kenya. And so I'm with a team of three people. I had no idea. I was just given a piece of paper. And uh, I remember I arrived, we drove for two and a half hours, three hours to get to the pastor's house, one of the pastors. And when I arrived there and I had this piece of paper and it was bugging me because I hadn't got a clue. Everything they were talking about in this pastor's meeting, leadership meeting, it was going over my head. I didn't know. And I sat and I went to the pastor. I said, pastor, <laughs> um, can you explain to me what do you expect us to do as a group? And you've given me this, I've been given this piece of paper and there's 42 names, 42 churches on this um, paper. What is it you expect us to do as a group? He said, oh, my brother, I expect you I, as a group to minister to all these churches in 10 days. 42 churches. My brain couldn't process this 42 churches in 10 days i said no 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 not even one day off he said all right my brother one day off <laughs> 42 churches <laughs> oh my god you know what A baptism at fire. <laughs> right into the midst of uh, uh, fire i mean they're talking about i'm a I'm just going, I'm green, to totally green. We're green, <laughs> I'm telling you. I remember, I've never been on a mission field before. And I tell this story because it's so important, but God will do something in a way 
that will affirm and confirm your call. I remember um, the first day, <laughs> so remember we've arrived on that day. So next morning we're out on the mission field. We've got four churches to minister to. Now, me knowing, not knowing what I was called to, I wore a light cream suit. It's a light cream suit, I believe it was. One of nice, I was nice tie, everything, shirt, everything, dressed to the nine. That's how I used, that's how I dressed in England. Not knowing that where I was going was like in the country and the, the dirt is red, reddish brown. And the, the van that we was in, had a, I don't know what it had, it had a few holes in there anyway. And I remember sitting in this van, I'm thinking, what, what, what is this? As I'm looking across at my brother and sister, who was a part of the team, I noticed is that their face were turning ashy brown and their clothes were turning ashy brown. This is the first day on the mission field. I'm thinking, I then looked at myself and saw my beautiful beige suit turn reddish brown. And I'm thinking, welcome to the mission field. Woo! You think it's glamorous, welcome to the mission field. And oh. I thought, they had drought. What well, I didn't know that they had had no rain for three months. Four, three, four months, they had no rain. I'm talking about no rain. They was experiencing drought. You know what? <laughs> I said, oh my God. And you know when you, you're thinking, I could never turn up like this in England with, <laughs> with a, a, a reddish, full of dirt, full of dust. My face was full of dirt, full of dust. Red. <laughs> we, were, we were all red in the van. <laughs> I'm thinking. So we arrived at this church. And um, as we arrive at the church, the, there's a welcoming party. And as we stepped across the threshold, as we stepped across the threshold, the heavens opened and there was a downpour of rain. The rain, torrential rain came down. We, I, we didn't know anything. I didn't know yeah, anything. Didn't <laughs> I didn't said a word. The people were jumping, skipping, praising, hallelujah, praise God. They were running around the church, everything. I'm thinking, what is happening there? They said, it's a miracle. It's a miracle. We haven't had rain for four months, three, four months. And as soon as you come, rain. This is a blessing. You know what? It was a miracle to them. It was a miracle to them. But because of my obedience, and I won't go through the stuff, because I dared to do something different to help that mission team, that church, the, that vicinity, that area was blessed by rain. Not because of me. But because of what God wanted to do, he wanted to bring glory to him. And what I'm saying is that for, that was like a catalyst. I'm going to say to you today, I, yes, we ministered in that church <laughs> in, in, my, in my brown suit now. It's not beige, it's now brown. I ministered full of dust, dusted it. But the thing is, we had dinner at that church. And we left there thinking, oh, the rain stopped now. What I forgot was this. The fact that it hadn't rained for four months and it was dust. When it rained, it became mire. It became, it was dirt. It was now a dirt track. It was red. <laughs> it was impossible. They tried to. We had driven for a little while and then we stopped. And then we like stopped in a ditch. What do you think God said, would say to me? Sit down in the van, you're, you're a man of God. You, you caused the rain to come down. Forget that. We all had to get out of the van and push the van. 
get the van, get the van out of the mud. <laughs> when the wheels were turning, what do you think was happening? That brown suit was now black. <laughs> was now completely red with mud because it was splashing on us, all over us, the face, everything. Welcome to the ministry. <laughs> but you know what? We had to go from there to three other churches. And you know what happened? Signs followed. People got healed, set free and delivered. In the day, it was very hot. But at night, it was perishingly cold. It, I thought we turned up at a church and they were in, they were in blankets. I'm thinking, what's happening here? It was the extremes. But you know what? Because I dared to do something different, God showed up. And I'm t I'm, all I'm going to say to you, every one of you, it's not what everybody else is doing. What has God called you to do? How are you going to get God to move on your behalf? Is it, are you going to press through the crowd? Are you going to say, I don't care what anybody else is saying. God has given me a word and I'm going to decree and declare that word whatever way I do, do it. God's going to confirm every word through me with signs. Are you going to do it? Or are you going to say, you know what? I've got to keep everybody sweet. I've got to do it the way the world's doing. No. You got, if you want God to move on your behalf in this 2023, you got to dare to be different. You got to be as bold as a lion. You have got to be, you have got to be confident in your God that whatever God says is more than able to do it. Unto him who's able to do exceedingly abundantly above that which you can even ask, think, imagine, or even dream according to the power of his love that works within you, the power that works within you. There's a love that will constrain you to do something beyond the norm. There is a desire that is greater than your personal desire for your own personal thing that will drive you to do things that is abnormal. But you know what? God will come through for you. God will come through. You will see miracles. I Let me say something. People, I remember that in that first day, there was someone, there was a girl. I, I remember it now. I haven't shared this story. There was a girl that was brought to the church. It was a young girl. She was about 11 or something like that. The, 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 the father brought that girl to the church, I remember it now, and yeah. said, my daughter needs prayer. She hasn't slept. I'm talking about sleep. She hasn't slept for about seven, eight months. No sleep whatsoever. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about no, I'm not talking about having a little, she, I said, what do you mean? He said, no sleep whatsoever. She's tormented, she can't sleep. I remember praying for that girl. I prayed for that girl. I just prayed. I, in simplicity, I just prayed. In the name of Jesus, I del be delivered. Be delivered from this lack of sleep, whatever I said at the time. What, it was a simple prayer. And when I say simple, it was simple. It wasn't highfalutin. It was simple prayer. You know something? Within the nine, nine days, the father showed up with a girl. I think after the six days, showed up somewhere else where he was ministering. And he said, you know the day that I brought my daughter? And I'm thinking, do I remember you? He said, I'm the one that brought my daughter. My daughter's here now. The same night. When you prayed for her, she went to sleep. She slept like a baby and she's continued to sleep from then. I'm telling you, God is a miracle working God. That's a testimony. <clears throat> that girl looked different. Will you dare to be different? Will you dare to do what God instructs you to do?
I'm just going to read one more scripture and then I, I'm going to pray. And um, I'm going to pray. I'm just going to read. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to read this. And it says, um, 1 Corinthians 2. 1 Corinthians 2. And I read this on Sunday, and I'm going to read it again. And 1 Corinthians 2, verse... One And he says, when I came to you, brothers and sisters, proclaiming to you the testimony of God concerning salvation through Christ, I did not come with superiority, superiority of speech or wisdom, no lofty words of eloquence or of philosophy as a Greek or orator might do. For I made the decision to know nothing that is forego philosophy or theology, theological discussion regarding consequential things and the opinions while among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified and the meaning of his redemption, substitutionary death and his resurrection. I came to you in a state of weakness, vulnerable, in a state of weakness, vulnerable, transparent, weakness and fear and great trembling, hallelujah. And my message and my preaching were not in persuasive words of wisdom using clever rhetoric, but they were delivered in demonstration of the Holy Spirit operating through me and of his power, stirring the minds of the listeners and persuading them so that your faith would not rest on the wisdom and rhetoric, rhetoric of men, but on the power of God. And I'm just saying to you, we need to know today that whatever you've been called to do whatever you're doing for 2023 that your faith is going to rest not on man's wisdom or the rhetoric of men or the wisdom of men or the philosophy of men but through the demonstration of the holy spirit in the name of jesus to the power and to the glory and to the honor of the father jehovah god You've got to know that. You have got to know that. And so I'm saying to you, and I'm, look, we know we've got family. We know we've got work. We know we've got needs. And we know we've got all those things. But I'm saying to you, put God first. Listen to God. Be fully persuaded in God. Not trust in him and him alone. Present yourself as a gift and everything that you have with it, that comes with you. Present it to God. Offer it. Be the offering to God. You be the offering to God. And God will move mightily through you. Remember, Jesus always said, according to your faith, be it unto you. According to your trust and reliance and dependence on me, be it unto you. And so I'm going to say to you, and I'm encouraging you, every one of you, you've been, you've been believing for things and it's not happened. And you're thinking, you know what, if I seek the counsel of this man, the counsel of this person, the counsel of this organization, the counsel of someone else's experiences, then I'm going to get it. Seek Jesus. Seek Jesus. As that woman with the issue of blood, with the hemorrhaging, she sought Jesus as a blind man they sought Jesus as Peter he reached out to Jesus every person who reached out to Jesus received receive Jesus you have everything because you know what the Holy Spirit comes into alignment to God's will as you seek Jesus and make him the Lord of your life so bless you I'm just going to pray right now. And uh, <laughs> I just uh, was reading 
the chat, muddy anointing. <laughs> hey, Amen. Yes, it was. It was an experience. Sometimes you're baptized into things. I use that word baptized because you're immersed into situations that you don't plan. And you think, how did I arrive here? You need, that needs to happen with you every single waking moment of the day. You need to know, this is not me, this is God. This is not natural, this is supernatural. It's a miracle, it's a sign and it's a wonder. Praise be to God. And I'm just gonna pray today that regardless of what man might say, what the reports might say, what the world might say, you can receive a miracle today as God uses you in a supernatural way because you dare to be different. You dare to trust God. You dare to believe God. And you dare to act upon God's will and it's God's purpose for your life. So I'm just going to pray right now. Heavenly Father, I just thank you. I thank you, Lord, for the word this morning. Whatever I've said, Father, this morning, it wasn't planned, but Father, by your spirit, you have led me to speak in this era. Because you know what? We come into New Year's, we hear so many New Year's resolutions, we hear declarations, Father God, but what are you saying to your children? What are you saying to what are you, me as an individual? What are you saying? What are you speaking into my heart? What are you speaking into their heart right now? Let them have an ear to hear what you're saying, Father God, through and by the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Father, I pray that our hearts, hearts will be open to receive from you. That, Father, even as you constrain us to do your will, we will be obedient to do it, Lord. Father, I pray your anointing upon us that we remove every burden and destroy every yoke of the enemy. Father, where confusion comes, where doubt might come, Father God, we will eradicate the doubt. We will drive it out, Father, and we stand in your ability and in trust in you, Lord, that having done all to stand, we will stand and declare the glory and the victory of the Lord. Father God, I pray that, Father, as we receive Jesus, we know that Jesus is the one that always causes us to triumph. And so, Father, we will trump every situation. We are trying triumph over every everything that will come in our midst everything that we encounter father we will overcome it why because of our trust in you and father i thank you for deliverance i thank you for healing i thank you for restoration i thank you for completeness i thank you for your divine favor right now divine favor favor that is not fear favor that doesn't make any sense favor that is unconditional for favor i thank you for that father right now in the name of jesus father i pray that we will not look over the fence to somebody else and say i want what that what that person has but father we will recognize through intimacy with you yes. that which you have for us lord yes. well, that is you. personal for us lord yes. father this is not competition this is not compromise this is not complacency this is not counterfeit but this is truth in you lord that you desire truth in you father i pray that as we come to you grace and peace will be multiplied to us Hallelujah. through the intimacy of knowing you. And so, Father, I pray even now that we're in our hearts, you are planting desire in there, a burning fire and a flame in our hearts that we will seek you through your word, that we will take time out, set time aside to study your word, to show ourselves approved unto you a workman not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. Rightly dividing means declaring your power, your magnificence and your glory, that men will not look at us, but look to you and say, this is marvelous in our sight. Yes, Father, you are real. Jesus, you are real. That all glory will come to you. Father, I thank you right now. I thank you for the peace and the joy. 
that is multiplied to us right now that as we walk in acknowledgement that you are real lord you are real you are real in our lives and that you are first in our lives father i pray that you will use us these signs shall truly follow us as we believe we shall cast out devils we shall lay hands on the sick and see them recover father the lame will walk the deaf will hear the blind will see the dead shall be raised father that great commission that you gave to your disciple is the same commission that you give to us today because we are the disciplined one we are the anointed one we are christians little anointed ones father the same authority has been given to us and so father i thank you that signs will follow us not that we follow after run after signs but signs will follow us that yes. you might be glorified yes. that men may see our good works and come to glorify you the father now they see the light of your glory in and through each and every one of us father i pray that in it seeking you that every need will be met that we will declare and decree and see every word confirmed through us with signs following father thank you for the authority and the assignment that is being placed upon us and the responsible responsibility that we have given that even with a with faith as a mustard seed little faith we truly can move mountains we can make a difference we can shake oh, this world we can turn this world upside yes, down God, and father God. not it's not that i point to someone else but i say and we say individually use me lord use me use me lord i pray father i thank you i thank you i thank you we thank you lord we give you praise bless you lord father there's nothing that can stop us from our purpose no death can stop us before our time father i pray that we will all live out our sign and appointed time to do your will and to do great exploits in and through you that father will have a testimony we have a testimony in jesus mighty name amen and amen and amen and amen praise be to god let the platform just say amen and hallelujah praise be to god amen 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 oh glory to god hallelujah praise be to god thank you jesus thank you lord um in short if anybody wants to share anything say anything pray you're given that opportunity right now bless you and i pray that you have received i pray that every word will be sealed yes. in your heart and yes. in your spirit today yes. remember yes. you are unique yes. you are god's workmanship work of art masterpiece created in christ jesus onto good works which are beforehand god has ordained you to walk in you are have been ordained to walk in the supernatural hallelujah praise be to god hallelujah thank you jesus thank you lord is there anybody that uh, want you feel that uh, god is impressing upon you just to comment to pray just to share an experience or something that will encourage your brother and sister this morning please do in jesus name otherwise um i'm just going to ask uh keith Okay. just to play us out right now in jesus mighty name amen thank you so much for that beautiful song that was wonderful let the spirit lead us and teach us and guide us and we will walk on water not physical water but we will step out of our comfort zone step out of our comfort zone and uh, allow the spirit of god to lead us I just want to say thank you, Pastor Chris, for your obedience uh, to share the word. We received that word today. Truly, the life-changing word. Dare to be different. <laughs>
dare to allow the spirit of God to just do something extraordinary. Uh, so yeah, we thank you all for joining. Have a fabulous, awesome rest of your day. Uh, God is with you, he's for you, he's gone ahead of you, he's beside you, he's in you, he's moving, he's living, he's moving inside of you, he's having his very being inside of you. You are not alone, you are par partnering with the Holy Spirit, you're in partnership, that means we're never alone, we don't go this journey on our own, he's with us and he's for us. So have a fabulous day and we meet again tomorrow, God willing. God bless you. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Um, just in short, just to remind you all that um, our weekday prayer devotions are no longer four days a week, but it's three days a week now for those of you that don't know. So we're here from Tuesday to Thursday. And so... Mondays we're not here and Fridays we're not here and uh, but on Saturday we still have the prayer clinic and on Sunday we still have the services so this across the week there are five meetings five is the number of grace mm -hmm. and we know what when grace uh, is manifest we know what happens <laughs> you see so it's unconditional love it's favor it's empowerment of the Holy Spirit it's everything that we need and so I believe that uh, as uh, God has directed me in that area, that uh, exponentially you will all grow um, and we will benefit um, from the administration from this platform. So thanks be to God. I've been empowered. Remember, we're here from Tuesday to Thursdays now. We allow Monday for you to lay a foundation and in your own quiet time with the Lord and Friday, just to conclude, coming to conclusion for the end of that week, laying, still laying foundations in the Lord. And uh, so sometimes what it is, you need to just step away and just consecrate yourself on a personal, lay, uh, personal level to the Lord. And I just felt that we needed to do that. Personally, I needed to do that. And uh, in terms of what God is calling me to do. Uh, so uh, be empowered, pray that you've um, been infused and that you're going to dare to be different. Dare to be different. Praise be to God and see the miracles, signs and wonders of God manifested in and through your life. You're an instrument of God. So be empowered in Jesus' name. Bless you all. See you tomorrow by God's grace. Bye, everyone. Carleen, Heather, Lenny, Mother Brown, yeah, Donna, yeah. Shanique, Fiona, Keith, Daniel. Bless you all. Amen. Bye, everyone. Bye. God bless you. Bye, Bye all. Bye.